Hey everybody, it's Smoking Jay here with SGN Hub. And over the past 28 days, we had nearly 117,000 views. But the sad part about that is, out of 117,000 views, only 3,700 of you guys were subscribed. We're just asking, could you please hit the subscribe button? If you like the video, hit the like button. It really helps push us out into the algorithm. But until next time, Smoking J and back to the video. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to a very special Maximum Monday. Today, I got my boy Turkey above me here, and I got everybody's favorite game developer, lead designer. Michael Brown from Maximum Entertainment for Maximum Football. Say what's up, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. What's going on, guys? Glad to be here. All right, now. Now. Let's just ask the first question right off the rip. So let's start at the beginning, Michael. What made you guys get into... Well, when, I'm sorry. What made you get into video game rating? That side of it. What made you pick that career path for you? What, what inspired you from that? Uh, well, first off, I was a gamer, like probably most of the, your listeners, a uh, huge gamer, uh, played all the time, mostly into RPGs. And, and originally it was Ultima Online back in the day, played Ultima Online religiously all the time. Favorite game of all time. Um, pretty much every game I think about, like when I try to design games or anything like that, I always have Ultima in the back of my, in the back of my mind. Um, I also played college football, uh, played high school football. Um, and what led me basically to this project was, uh, you know, they, they knew I knew I knew a guy who worked on the project originally. He knew I played football. Um, he knew I was in the game industry and he brought me in, interviewed me. I talked about, you know, basically just went through the interview, how much I love football um, and, you know, basically landed the job working on Maximum. Um, but, you know, originally it was just a, a love of video games. Um, I also went to grad school for video games at UCF. It's a uh, okay. it's a master. Is a master's degree through the it's called FIA Florida Interactive Entertainment Academy, um, and so had a got a master's degree there, and yeah, and then after that I went to work at EA Sports, uh, worked on Madden for a few years, um, and then after that I started my own little company, a uh, little game development studio company, and we made zero money, and so about after a year we all just quit and went back and worked for studios. Right. Okay. Well, I'm going to jump right into the gameplay because that's what everybody's been glossing over the past couple of months. And really, let's talk about it. So the improvement and the steps y'all have made just in this last six months window is very visible as the post you make on Twitter. So let's just talk about that real quick. Explain some of the process that's gone behind these big leaps over the last couple of months that you guys have made as far as gameplay was. Uh, sorry, you broke up. You said, you know, can you repeat the last part of that? Um, as far as gameplay wise, explain what went into the, some of the leaps that you've made over the last couple of months. the strides y'all had. Well, a lot of the strides we've made in the last couple of months, um, we were they were kind of loaded and ready, right? Um, uh, the, basically, a lot of things came to fruition in the last couple of months, um, like the physics and all these like physics, the lighting, a lot of the cinematics, a lot of the gameplay elements, a lot of that stuff we've been working on for like two years now. Um, and they've been in about a quarter percent done, 50 percent done, 75 percent done, depends on the features. But, you know, one feature will be 75 percent done. Another feature will be like 80 percent and something else will be 50. Um, in the last couple of months, things have been coming kind of to completion. Um, so a lot of the big strides we've made in the last couple of months are actually due to the last you know year and a half of just hard work that the laying down the foundation for all of these mechanics and they're all kind of sort of just finishing like lapping into like one finished project and it's, it seems like there is a lot of stuff like rolling out through, through like like right now like we're getting a lot of good information a lot of stuff that people have been asking for so i see whenever you're saying having them like loaded and ready i see what you, it's like all right 95 percent, boom 90 boom here comes the next one it's you know right around the corner i see what you mean by that yeah. Yeah. And the, and the thing is, until a feature is really done, and not even just done, right? Because the first step is you get something working. And when it works, you're like, oh, cool. It works. Awesome. Like this guy can now go into a hole or this guy can now yeah. catch the ball well. But that's just the first step, getting it working. After that is the polish to make sure that it works like beautifully. Um, so there's a lot of things we have working. And then we, 
you know, we'll post it online or something, post it on Twitter, and then somebody will see like one small part of it that's yeah. not completely polished. And, exactly. you know, and they'll kind of, yeah, exactly. So yeah, I mean, I feel like development and actual implementation of it are like, I feel like they're, they're almost like two, not, not necessarily a separate process, but it's like, like you said, it's one thing to be like, okay, he can catch. Okay. But now how about actually applying it to a simulation perspective? Like he can catch, but now will he catch in an actual realistic scenario, given, you know, the trajectory of the ball flying in, where he's out on the field, where his toe, will his toe land in bounds if he actually, you know, does it look like there's effort? So I see what you mean, all that stuff coming into one. Yeah. Yeah, well, exactly. That also, like, ties right into something you were talking about last week, about, like, some, you know, breaking down the catching, right? Catching angles, the sideline catching, and some of the stuff like that in the, uh, in the server. And I've got some gameplay up on the screen right now. I guess. Can you break it down, kind of what goes into just something as simple as no defense on the field, just a guy running his route, the ball trajectory, and him catching the ball? Um, are you showing right now? I am, uh, yes. Uh, the video? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't see your screen. But um, so basically, you're, you're seeing the ghosted images? Or yes, like the, the, eight, the, okay. the orange and the purple and the yes. Okay, so this is actually a pretty big feature. This thing has been, we've been working on this stuff for a while. Um. And so this this catching the so before we had this working so what you're seeing right there is is the catching system is trying to pick the right animation to get to the ball um, at the ball's landing location. Right. Um, so you got to understand the way the um, animations work. So when you have a catching animation, it's it's a certain length of time, right? It might be like one second, one point five seconds. Mm -hmm. And so the player starts from here and he ends up up here or something like that. Okay. Um, and the animation might take about two steps, one step, three steps. It really just depends. Um, but when you play that animation, it has to get to the point of the catch right when the ball is landing there, right? So the ball is incoming. It's dropping like a mortar. And you got an animation that starts here, and then it has to end right here when the ball arrives at his hand. Um, and so what you're seeing right there is basically it's, it's checking all of these different animations to make sure that the end pose lines up directly mm. uh, with the ball when it lands there. Um, so, you know, there's other things we do to make sure that the hands we have, we use IK to make sure that like the hand can actually, the ball doesn't have to be directly into the hand. The hand can actually move a little bit and get to the ball. Um, but there's some limits there because if you go too far with IK, the arms will like stretch out and go behind the head and catch right here and do all this weird stuff. Um, so what you're seeing there has allowed us to, you know, before this, before what, before that system started working that you're looking at, we had to actually warp the ball. So the ball would be in the air flying with physics, right? Just just mm -hmm. purely going with physics. Um, and then right when it got to the last, like, uh, like five yards, it would warp to the player's hands uh, that it, that like it a, wanted to like go to. You know, I, it, like a... for me personally, looking like kind of from an untrained perspective, the way that I'm recognizing that and I'm seeing the ball, I'm looking at it as almost, like you were split. It's like a keyframe almost, like it, I'm almost in like editing, but you're thinking about it like live and, you, and you're also considering the player's the timing of the part, like when the person who's controlling the user thinks they should throw the ball. So it's not as simple as like, oh, the ball's on the way there. This animation should happen. There's there's an amount of time that ball is in the air. And if the ball doesn't have its own physics, you know, you're also, you know, you have the stats of the ball, the person throwing the ball that come into play with where it's going. When the, so it's it's actually interesting to see that broken down and to see the animation keyframes. And you, you explain that honestly really well. That was really cool to see coalesce and, and hear you explain that from your perspective. I appreciate that breakdown. It honestly rolls yeah, Absolutely. That was actually cool. I was like, wow. Like, I, I see I what like you're I saying. I can see it genius. turning that color, the animation selected. Wow, even, that's sick, dude. Even wow. watching this, yeah. like, the hand breakdown of it, it was dope. But that leads me to this next thing. Everybody praised y'all when y'all first came out and said, we're going to be a physics-driven game, right? That was a big focus for you, physics. So I'm going to pop this physics uh, gameplay clip up that you shared earlier, and I'll have this question mm -hmm. for you, because everybody seems to have this wild idea that if you have physics, you don't need animations. If you have animations, you don't need physics. And that's why people say they hate man because there's too many animations compared to physics. So explain somewhat how you have a perfect combination of physics and animations to make the game. I don't know if it's perfect yet. You know, it's going to take some time to get to perfection. Um, so are you showing the clip that I, that I sent? Of, it's not a football player. It's just a, a, a model in the Unreal Engine, correct? Yeah. Okay. So this is a good example. So what you're seeing there is an animation. Um, but it's a physics, it's a animation, sorry, physics driven animation. Um, so basically what happens is as soon as the ball hits his leg, it basically just ragdolls the player, right? right. Ragdolls the player's legs. It's not complete ragdoll, it's a constrained ragdoll. So like you can, the way you can do a ragdoll is like if somebody hits an arm right here, right? If you set like the stiffness of it to like zero, it'll just fly off, right? You can just 
throw it off. If you set the stiffness to like five or something, it'll barely move, right? And you can do that with all these different body parts. So you can hit the shoulder and it'll barely move, hit it more. Um, and so that's a lot of what the rag doll does. You just kind of bounce it all over the place. Would you but, say you use those factors to balance out like uh, essentially like reactions, like the stiffness factor is what you would consider like a readiness, like how ready somebody is to, to for like for, for actual physics to be into play is whenever you say like the stiffness rating of it, whenever they're in uh, there. We haven't gotten that far yet to where to like to where like attributes and stuff like that okay. are affecting the stiffness ratings. Um, that's a level of polish. Like that's what I mean by a level wow. of polish. You know, you get that's the physics crazy. working and then, wow. yeah, you start layering on stuff like so that. That goes into play with like Roberts with DBs and right and Robert Super battles, right? The attributes along with the animations and physics. Like the, mm -hmm. the in air, the in air battles for the ball. Basically is what I'm saying. Yep. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. So the attributes. So basically what we got to do, what we're starting to jump into right now, and this is, now that that system's working, the one that I, that you showed earlier with the catching, mm -hmm. um, you know how it, it picks the ghosted image to kind of figure out like which animation matches up, but you also have to. It also picks who's going to swat it, right? Like it show it and it uses it uses attributes to figure out like the highest catch point or like the highest point of this player. How high can he get up there to tip it? And it's and it picks an animation based off of those attributes. Um, so we haven't gotten to the point yet where where our attributes are picking like spectacular catches you know like like crazy diving catches and all that kind of stuff that'll be the next level um and you know like once you get to like you know 95 attribute up to 100 you'll start having these um like fantastic catches yeah, and stuff like wow. that I'm, yeah i'm actually going to throw that clip up you uh shared in the server as well about the it's almost perfect for this when it's basically it's a bunch of ghost images in the middle that one, you know what I'm talking about, where they're fighting for the yeah. ball? It's a perfect breakdown mm -hmm. for this. So it's not quite there yet, but the way you're talking, it's, it's a whole other system along with the algorithm, basically, of other queued up things. Yeah. Yeah. That's nuts. Just to go There's into so one There's so many, play. like, working parts. It's actually really fascinating to see the breakdown of the animation selection. I, I'm, I'm thinking about it from, like, an editorial standpoint. Like, like, you think, like, layers upon layers upon layers. Like, one layer is the functionality. The next one is the animation. Then you have the variable, which is the user. And then... And, you know, there's just so much more that goes into this than honestly than I expected. But to see the progress being made in it is actually insane. And, and prior to this interview, you were talking about the physics. I was like, I wonder if the football has its own physics. And then you're like, well, the, pride, yeah. the football used to have its own. I was like, wow, this is insane. It's, this is crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, so that's that that was that's why the passing feature is such a big thing, because it it, it makes the ball pure physics. Yeah. <clears throat> Whereas before it was pure physics. And then right at the end, it would kind of warp. Um but now we just have pure physics. So even even when you kick it, like the ball will, wow. it'll never do anything that's that's predetermined. The ball it's will wild. always be driven by physics. It's yeah, all live too. It's it's yeah, all yeah. on time. The whole thing through. That's amazing. Okay, I'm I'm gonna stick with the gameplay uh, stuff right now. Okay, so you know, way back you you guys said the control scheme is similar to the old K style. What made you guys pick a different control scheme than the popular Madden one? Air air quote, you know, type thing. What made y'all go that route as far as the control? We're not, we're actually not done with the control scheme. We can change the buttons. We tried to, I mean, a lot, we've, so we had an original tr a control scheme that was based off of Madden. Um, and then we switched it up and kind of based it off 2K. And then we listened to what the, fa what people in the Discord were saying. We've asked everybody what the, what they think the control scheme should be. And everybody has a different opinion. Um, so we're not exactly done. Um, you know, the default controls, not a, there'll still be some tuning, there'll still be some polishing left before completely done with those um but you know I, I i think in the end it'll be close to madden okay well i have a big one coming for you here right. michael so i'm gonna share this uh intro screen that you sent us the one where right. the stadium zoom in you know and the seats are <laughs> purple you know oh yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody mm -hmm. and their mother wants to know will stadium creator eventually find his way to maximum is that something <laughs> in the pipeline uh you said a stadium creator yeah Yes, yes. Um, it's not going to be at launch, though. Um, so the beginning of stadium, <laughs> uh, the beginning of the beginning of the stadium creator is going to be the field designer, and the beginning of that is um, just changing the color of the, the field, the grass, you know. And then the beginning of like the stadium designers is just changing the seat colors. Um, and then we'll get to a point. And then after, like right now, you just change the seat colors, and it's just and it takes your primary, your team's primary color and your team's secondary color, and it kind of mixes the seating sections between those two colors. Mm -hmm. Um, the next step after this is we're just going to start building on top of that so that you can like pick a section and change that, that section's colors, oh, yeah, uh, seat colors, pick that so, section. Yep. 
So, like, because right. the only thing that's comparable right now, is, I don't know if you play MLB The Show, but that's basically the only yeah. thing that you can have a template off of what a stadium creator could look like unless mm-hmm. you go back to the older maps. So, or even older games in, uh, in All Pro Football 2K8. Like it, it's, it's act. There was actually a similar system implemented in All Pro Football 2K8, where they chose your 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 uniform colors for like your home field because they didn't have they, mm-hmm. they they did have some of the athletes in All Pro Football 2K, but they didn't have all of them. They had like legends like Jerry Rice, Earl Campbell, and all those back in that you know, and that was all custom created. So that's so cool to see that implemented. That's dope. The that's um, really cool. oh sorry. No, go ahead. No, oh go no, ahead. that was just. I'm just... <laughs> um, I mean, our vision, the vision we've kind of talked about internally when we actually do come out with the stadium creator is something similar to old school Halo Forge. Um, oh, you know, where you move goodness. pieces around, and stick them together. Wow. Um, the way we actually, st- so our currently our stadiums, the, the stadiums we have right now are all built with modular pieces. Um, so you can actually stick in, st- you can make new stadiums pretty simply, uh, pretty quickly. Um, like I can jump in right now and make my own stadium if I wanted to, because, you know, we have all these modular pieces and they can just stick together. And if one, if you want like a bigger section, you just grab another piece, stick it in there. If you want to add some box seats on top, you can just stick them on. It's all very like Lego pieces. That sounds um, reminiscent of like the map editor. Also, like I, I'm, I'm picturing, I don't know if you've played it back in the day. I know it's a completely separate genre, but uh, Far Cry Instinct's Predator and the old Far Cry games back in the day had yes. a level editor and a le- where you could like snap pieces of terrain you could snap building blocks and you could create almost pre-edited structures so that's insane to think it's that easy to create your own that that's that's awesome that's that's so cool that's exactly that how MLB works that's like that's almost exactly oh, nice. to the t like you, it's just it's like you pick a structure you like and you snap it on where you want. yeah that's that's really yeah. especially in the football space like things like that really excite me honestly that's why that wow for me like it's like that's so cool because i love the the creativity aspect of it i'm thinking about that like i said uh at the beginning prior when we were first talking I, i'm definitely like more of an intermediary person. Like I'm really interested in a, a different kind of football game aside from just Madden and being, not, and it's no slander. I'm far from the person to just slander, just ultimate team. And just, you know, the NFL, I've always been somebody that likes to create their own player and create my own experience. And to hear that you're, you're able to do that, you know, so simply, and those are things in the pipe. That's super exciting to me from the, from the outside in of that genre. That's really cool to hear. Awesome. Yeah. I'm the same, but it just so you know, like it's working on the back end so that we can, you know, make new stadiums right. pretty simply, but wow. it's going to be a good amount of work to get it working on the front end course, and make sure. That, yeah. So cool. Okay. So that leads into something. Speaking of creative, you, I don't know if you've heard, we have a universe. Kind of bit. You heard about that at all. Um, no. Within, within maximum. So basically what we're trying to do is we're going to have our own live version of our own world in maximum. We're going to have a high school, college and professional league. So all that right. leads me to, yeah, exactly. So that leads me to this. Like, so with all the customizations you have, like the capabilities, like is basically endless. So everybody wants to know if I have connected leagues like this, a high school, a college or a pro level, will I be able to import my rosters? Like, will I be able to have all those things to be able to upload and cross save over? That's basically everybody's biggest worry. Are from basically two, two genres in football and, and one, basically. Uh, you're saying, so let me make sure I understand the question. You're saying, can you take like, if you have like a high school league, can you take the players and move them into like college yeah. league? If I have a then, college wow. league and move into the pros, can I do that? Okay. Or drive so yeah. Uh, so right now we don't really have um, plans for high school. We could potentially. Not saying it's not something that we won't do, but right now uh, the main focus has been on college and pro. Um, and so we are building franchise right now, and a part of franchise, one of the main parts of franchise, is being able to take your players from dynasty and port them right into the the franchise mode and doing all that without having to leave the game, right? Like <clears throat> um, the way we want it to work is basically in any of your dynasty modes, in any of your dynasty leagues, um, you could basically just export a draft class and you'll have a library of draft classes. And then when you go into franchise, you can just select whichever draft class you want to select from that library of draft classes, import them into your franchise as a draft class. Love it. Love everything I just heard. That's that's amazing because uh, that's what everybody's biggest uh, thing is for this college dropping is they want to be able to import their rosters. So mm-hmm. That's the that's that was great to hear. All right, so cool. let's stick within one more gameplay question. Is typically in modes really uh, dynasty, right? I know that's like the big thing y'all been working on in the scenes. Uh, how how far has that come along? Since last time I posted about. It? Uh, Dynasty is in the final stages. Um, I'm, for launch, I mean, right? I don't think right, we'll yeah. ever really, yeah, like we'll always be working on Dynasty. Um, but for what we want to launch with, we are pretty much just in the polishing of it right now. Um, 
So in the private discord the other week, I kind of sent out a message to everybody in there and said, hey, you know, what do you is there anything in our dynasty that's missing? Anything that you want changed? Um, and so we've collected some feedback. And right now we're kind of doing the last um, piece of dynasty improvements before we kind of just wrap it up and then fully move on to franchise. So we have, you know, we have about half of our dynasty team who just moved over to start working on franchise. Um, and then once we have in about two, three, four weeks, we'll probably move the rest of those guys over to franchise. So the last thing we're working on in Dynasty is the ability for um, teams to basically bad teams. So we're going to start ranking the conferences in Dynasty. Um, and then the worst teams are going to start filtering to the bad the bad conferences. And then the better teams will start filtering up to the bet, to the better conferences. And so that should be the last thing we add to Dynasty until launch. And then after launch, we'll start adding some more stuff. All right, so another one for the creative side. Will there be a play editor? Because I know in the previous Maximum Footballs, they had they had a play editor, and I didn't know if you guys were going to bring that over for some fashion of that. Uh, like designing your own plays? Yes. Uh, that's So we wanted to have that in by launch, and that was one of the features that we actually cut um, just to, because, you know, we were, we're trying to get the game. We're trying to get the game out and stop pissing everybody off. But uh, so, <laughs> so the play designer is, you know, it's something that we started building. So it, it kind of works in the, you know, in the back end, we obviously have a play designer because we make our own plays. So for all of us designers and everybody else on the team who makes plays, we have a play designer that works. But to actually get that working on the front end for the user, uh, we're not going to have that until after launch. Um, but the way we want it to work is we don't just want you to like pick a, a, a a tree, like a, a route tree, you know, it would be nice. The way we want it to work is you can be able to draw any play yeah. that you want. Yep, exactly. Cool. Yeah. That's that's awesome. I'm glad to hear that's something that's coming down the pipeline after lunch. Okay. So way, way back. This is this is for online stuff now. Keep that in mind. This is an online thing. Eleven v eleven was something y'all talked about a while ago. Is that still planned? For, I'm some I'm assuming it's not, again post launch. But is that something you still guys want to tackle or, or no? Uh, maybe. Um, it just depends. So first we're starting one by one on one, uh, one versus one, which is already working really well. Um, and then we're moving basically to two versus two, three versus three and all multiple players playing each other. Um, 11 on 11 is, <clears throat> is kind of a different can of worms because you have to figure out what to do with offensive linemen. Um, and you have to make offensive linemen fun. So we have some ideas for how to make offensive linemen fun, but before we go, be, so before we actually get to eleven on eleven, we have to make them fun. So it's not like we can't just think like, oh, we'll make them fun eventually, whatever. And then eleven on eleven first, and then we'll make them fun later. Um, so first, we have to make it fun, which means you have to have actual blocking mechanics that the user can do with their controller, right? So, and and you got to figure out what that is because in every football game you've ever played, there are no blocking mechanics, right? You just you, you can't control the offensive lineman. Yeah. Um, as far I've never played a football game where you can control an offensive lineman. Um, yeah. So you can't have a yeah. So yes, she's a we have some. Okay, yeah, and I don't even know. Is it fun? I mean, is it's it not fun? out yet. Will it be fun? Yeah, not will out. it be fun? I don't know. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> I, it's funny you mentioned that. Like, it's I, I've never even really thought about that. And all I've played a tons of ton of from like quarterback club ninety nine to NFL Fever, Madden two K, like all of these games. And I've played. I remember even I don't know if it was what year two K it was, but they marketed playing first person mode as Warren Sapp. But I'm like, man. I don't think you play as the center or anything, you know, like because yeah. uh, that's that's an interesting thought you proposed. I've never thought about not playing as an O lineman. That's crazy. See, I'm a different breed. I, I look forward to that. That that's the battle in the. That would be no. I mean, that would be great if they're, 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 I'm, there's always something somewhere. I think for somebody to find, but like you said, you have to find that before you're like, yeah, this is what we'll do. You just can't you can't plot yeah. that in there. Like, I see exactly what you mean. It's like having an incomplete aspect of an otherwise polished thing. And yeah, also, yeah. like you got to see if the if the engagement's there, right? You don't want to put all that work into online mechanics if people never want to yes. be alignment. So, yes. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, it has to be fun. Yeah, it has to be fun, and it can't be like a. It can't be. I mean, but you could. We've thought about doing something where, like, um, what's the Star Wars Battlefield game that's out where Battlefront? Battlefront and again, this, yeah, and this isn't the feature. I'm just saying what we brainstormed. Um, but we've thought about doing something where, like, the more you play, you get points, and then you can kind of like pick the quarterback to play as the quarterback or something, and then yeah. you know. If, yeah, something like that, where if you only have a few points because you've not been playing very well, then you have to play as an offensive lineman, you know, and the more points you gain from doing good things, like if you block somebody, pancake them, you know, nicely, then maybe you'll get a bunch of points and then you could pick the quarterback and play as a quarterback for a drive. 
we don't know yet, um, but those are some of the ideas we have. Um, I, I was looking at uh, one question from the chat, and it kind of like resonated with something that I just remember from sports games. It always drew me in, uh, and it was from Game Zone. And they said, "What are the plans uh, for presentation? For example, uh, announcers, halftime show, pregame show, sideline report, so on." I know all those. That's like a, a code. That's a lot of things to say, but. For for when I say like it mattered, I remember playing Fight Night Champion and they had Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas. And that wasn't an aspect of the game, obviously, that I interacted with. But the level of what they were saying about what was going on, it seemed really interactive. And it, it's like it, it it just felt real, if that makes any sense. Like, you know, the yeah. way that they were talking. And I feel like that brings a whole nother ball game to it whenever you can implement something that's not just a cutscene you hit skip on. You know what I mean? Like there's instances where there'd be dialogue and I'd be like, oh, wow, he's saying something that sounds interesting and I haven't heard it before. Uh, and I was curious and as was GameZone about, you know, what, what are your thoughts on the effect of the atmosphere uh, rather than just, you know, the physics that we've been mentioning in the gameplay? How do you feel about the announcer and, and you know, the crowd cheering and bringing that to the game itself? Um, well, <clears throat> you know, one of the main things that I think our game lacks right now is commentators. Uh, we don't have two booth commentators in the game. Mm -hmm. And what ends up happening is you don't really realize how much the commentators add to the atmosphere, especially the downtime, right? Like in between plays when you're just picking plays or yeah. there's a lot of downtime. I mean, there's not a lot. We're trying to cut most of it out, but there's some downtime and commentators really fill that up and they really make it interesting. Um, and it's one of the things that we that we don't have right now. So we just finished our first prototype. So we got we have we've just kind of started actually about two months ago. We really started the push to get the two commentators in. Um, and so we went out, we found a bunch. we looked through a bunch of different voice actors, found some guys we liked, found some guys that sounded really good. Mm -hmm. And we've just in the last two months, we've started building the prototype for this commentary system. And I got my first listen to it last week and it sounds really good. Yeah, um, that's awesome. That's so whether awesome. it's. Whether it's ready by launch or not, I don't know yet. Um, but oh no, go ahead. No, no, no. We're not gonna we're not gonna delay the launch for the commentary. Absolutely. So if it's not ready by launch, then we're launching without it. Um, so, but so we knew from the beginning that we weren't gonna focus heavily on presentation. Um, we wanted the presentation to be good, of course, but the main focus, like we were focused like a laser for the last year and a half on on gameplay. Um, just the you know the moment to moment gameplay and we you know in our minds we're like all right we got you know we'll pay attention to presentation and try to get some sort of base level of presentation but we can't put all of our eggs into that basket right now right we can't put all of our resources into presentation we got to make sure the gameplay is fun nobody nobody's going to care about a sweet touchdown celebration or great commentators if the gameplay sucks yes so so that was see, first you see that 100 percent. but it, but we do have, so we said, you know, all right, we can't get booth commentators. That's going to be too complicated right now. We don't have time for it. Um, but we can get an announcer on the field. So, you know, high school games, if you remember back when you were in high school or watching high school games, there's usually an announcer who comes out of the loudspeakers. Um, and he's, you know, somebody who's just a voice on the field. Um, so we have one commentator who's a voice on the field. And he's, you know, he doesn't really add much atmosphere. He just calls the play like, you know, five yard gain by the running back. It's now first and you know first ten, mm -hmm. so he'll say basic things. It keeps you informed and it helps kind of kill some of the downtime. Um, but really, until we get those two commentators, I, I don't think the the presentation will be a uh, like some of that downtime won't be as interesting as it could be. But we are we do have some new cinema like we are working. We're we've got some uh, some really cool new cinematic updates, and I sent a couple over to you, Cozy. Oh yeah, but, I'm, about um, to, I'm about to throw one up right now. Throw yeah, and if you right could. Now. And if you compare some of these, if you compare some of these cinematics to the stuff we used to have, it's it's, it's night and day. These, like, it feels like we're getting to the to the level of AAA quality with some of our cinema with some of our cinematics. Really good, I, and and I've yeah. I've said it from the jump, and you probably heard it a thousand times here. Like, it's like you said, like it doesn't matter if you have the best announcer and all the cool emotes in the world if the gameplay so you nailed it right on the head. Yeah. And the, honestly, like, yeah. if the gameplay is right, the announcers can come. That was, that was yeah. very I think that's a conflicting paradigm that, 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 that that's where I think where we at in this day and age is a lot of it seems like developers these days lose I'm not going to say it because you know I'm not a developer but when I see prod I've played games since I was four years old so I can feel what I'm enjoying if it's good you know reviews come in sales and stuff at the end of the day you know people buy what they buy but people it seems like have gotten in the process of making games that sell rather than making yeah. a good game first and you can do both but if you make a good game, I feel like the results are so much more beneficial to the entire space. And I, and what I'm hearing that that's you know approaching a vision and, and approaching it in a way to make a good game is solid. And that, that's that you'd love seeing like this type type of progress. I'm watching the animation on screen. These are some extremely solid cinematics. I I just want to say real quick before the next question, 
class. That lighting. We just, I, we just appreciate it as a community. To see how much care and hard work and love y'all doing. Like, it shows like y'all actually care. You're not just out to be like a hype train and to fizzle out. So just wanted to say that real quick. Yes, absolutely. Honestly, especially right. bringing something new to the space, you know, and and actually, you know, it. Everybody knows whenever you say bringing something into the space, what it's been for so long. But it's it's really interesting to see someone really like just kind of sticking their cleats in the ground and and going full forward with it. So I really just echo what Quasi is saying. Okay. I mean, I. Okay. Yeah. Per, per, personally, I, I mean, I'm I, I don't. I want a game that I want to play. You know, I want to play. Yeah. A, yes. I want to play a good football game, yeah. man. Like I haven't played a good football game in so long that I yeah. really love. Yeah. So. Like for me, it's it's a personal thing, you know. Like I want to play a game that I like, that I enjoy. Um, yeah. So I don't, and it's and everybody else on the team's the same way. Um, you know, we've all we've talked about it. You're like at the, if the game, you know, at the end of the day, we will produce a great game, right? Yes. How the game sells, how the game, all this other stuff, that's that's a whole different story, you know. At the end of the day, all we can do is create a good game, and that's all we're focused on. Yes. Okay, I have a mode for a lot of people. Notice up there. This is for franchising. Kind of started on it. But are, are, since you guys aren't tied to an NFL license, will you be doing a salary cap or will it be market based, old school NFL, before they introduce salary cap? Why have y'all It'll be salary. That? It'll be salary cap. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Dynasty mode. Some people want to know will there be a player lock or a career mode feature in Dynasty mode? A player lock or a career mode, we don't have any of that right now, no. That would be like a next layer type thing. You know, we got the the foundation of Dynasty created um, and then sort of any any sort of like road to glory type mode or something like that will have to come later. All right. All right. So this is more on the uh, monetations, uh, monetization side of it. So... <laughs> Monetization? Yeah, I, 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 I stumbled. I stumbled there. So, I always do that, yeah. With it being a free-to-play game, what is your stance on monetization and strategy? Mm -hmm. um, the main goal is to, and, and keep in mind that we don't, you know, some people think that we have to, like, match our competitor in sales and all that stuff in order for us to be successful. We, we really don't. Um, so, you know, our monetization, um, we're mostly going to be based around cosmetics, um, cosmetics and a sort of season pass. Um, that's the main thing, cosmetic season pass. And then the modes like dynasty and franchise, you're going to have to buy into that. Um, but the way we're thinking of it right now is that um, that franchise and dynasty will be tied to the sort of season pass. So if you buy into the season pass, you can get the franchise and dynasty with it. Not under, We're not 100 percent sure on that yet. So don't quote me. Um, you know, a lot of the monetization stuff could change um in the next you know before we before we launch yeah. a lot of it we're going to be doing a lot of testing on it to make sure it's not pissing people off um mm -hmm. you know because you know we're free to play but it's you know there's still you can really quickly just piss people off if you microtransaction them you know to hell um so our goal is not to microtransaction everybody to hell um the goal is just if you want to buy cool cosmetics we got some cool stuff we got some really cool stuff that we haven't even shown yet that's going to probably blow some minds um a lot of the stuff we don't show like just so you know, there's a lot of stuff we don't yeah. show. Um, That's crazy to say because y'all show a lot. Yeah, yeah. So there's a whole bunch of cosmetics that we have. You can make any team, any I player you hear want. The customization aspect of it too, okay. and I feel like that's also it's part of responsibility as us as consumers. Not, I'm not, you know, I will say consumers as people that are going to be playing this football game. It, first and foremost, it's going to be free to play, and like you said, you yeah. have people getting pissed off with microtransactions. But at the end of the day, you downloaded tons of files that took a few years to create onto your whatever system or platform of choices for free. Yeah. And all that somebody is asking you to make it, you, they're not forcing you to, to get a cosmetic. You're doing it because you enjoy the product. So that, that I like that. Like that's, yeah. that's really solid. That's good. Honestly, and there'll yeah. be a deep, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. There'll be a default amount of customization that's free, right? So if you're somebody who just, you know, I don't want to, you know, there's kids who's going to want to jump in and they're not going to have money. You know, their mom, they don't have any money from their mom or something. And they still want to make teams. So there's a lot of default stuff that will be available. Like if you just want to make a regular team with no fancy face masks, you know, with, you know, like some crazy face masks and crazy visors and, and cool helmet pattern, all this. Kind of, if you just want to make a basic team, you can do it for free. Yeah. Right. But if you want to go crazy and you want to have like six alternate uniforms yeah. yes. and all this different stuff, then that's a different story. Okay. 
So honestly, right now I'm just a Futurama meme with the dude with Fry hand and his money. And just money. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically where I'm at right now. I got my money in my hand. Just take. It. Um, man, that's that's really about it. I got on the questions list. I said, you got anything for him? Uh, I can't really think of anything off the top of my head. But one question that I, I was thinking about throughout the process, you know, I'm just gonna scroll up, make sure I'm not missing anything while I ask this. Uh, I mentioned that prior, like I haven't stepped into the sports gaming market. Like it's it's been a while. You know what I mean? I, I had a big disconnect, and I think it was the year that Steve McNair was on the cover. I think I was talking to my dad about it the other day. I think it was '09. I think that was '09. I can't remember. Uh, but it, it's really solid to see you guys step into the space now. Now with all these, you know, we have. Obviously, maximum. Then you you see recently varsity football stepping in, and and the implications of ESG with the, the it seems like a more solo customization status. Do you guys ever look at some of the new contenders in the space and 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 look for some ways that you can implement that? Obviously, yours is a different experience because it's sim. But do you look at ways that you can improve upon your product from the outside as well? Not not just from Madden, from but also from ESG and varsity. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm insane. I watch everything. So yeah. I watch everything ESG does. I watch everything Madden does. People in the comments, he, he's <laughs> they paying watch attention. It. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's something that I feel like a lot of people, that, and I try to emphasize that. I was I was hoping I kind of get that point across in the, in the interview that we as consumers are, seem to be under the impression that whenever you speak and comment on something that these people are developing, like it's not like that comment just goes off into the ether. You know, these are things that are read and, and sometimes even if it's unnecessarily critical and you're not offering any type of solution or productive response, you're kind of bogging down also what you're hoping to do well. It's almost like an oxymoron. So if we can offer some more good constructive criticism in the space, you have far more of a better chance of seeing the game succeed. And hearing somebody draw inspiration from other games that, you know, that it it really is soothing. Like it's good to hear in the space. So that, that, that's just one question I was curious about. And that's that's really all I had myself personally. <laughs> Oh, I got one more from the chat that I completely somehow miss. Uh, we talked about the stadium and the creation and all that stuff, and we haven't seen weather in the game at all. Is is, is that still being tweaked on, worked on in the background? Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, we uh, I just saw the um, I just saw the winter stadium, a winter stadium, or like some winter atmosphere stuff the other day. It looked really cool. Um, <clears throat> so the, the problem with weather is that I, I was pushing back against weather for a while. I, and the main obstacle was me on the team. Everybody else wanted to grab and get weather. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I was, I was like, I don't know yet. I want cause I don't just want to put snow in the game. Right. I want to put deep snow that you have to like yeah. when it really snows and you could slip. And then yeah, like, pr like if you, you know, when you do a sharp turn, you slide a little bit more yeah. or, you know, it's hard to see downfield at a certain distance because there's so much snow and then, you know, real footprints in, in the snow. And when you hit the ground, you kind of make a little yes. a bundle, you know, you start. I wanted to do snow for real, not just snow falling. And then it has no, no difference on your attributes or anything like that. Um, and I also wanted to do rain for real, right? Like sheets of rain that throw the ball, like you throw the ball oh, to, you lob, water. Okay. you lob the, yes. exactly. You lob the ball too much. It starts to drift. Um, weather effects. Bunch of stuff like, yes. Exactly. Weather effect, but like real weather effects. Um, that stuff's hard, right? It's, it's hard to do. It's hard to get it all in there. Um, so we, we do have weather effects now. I don't know how much, I'm sorry. We do have weather cosmetically right now, right? Mm -hmm. Like we have the visuals of weather right now. Yes. I don't know how much of the weather effects we will actually have by the time we launch, but I, but we will be working on them and post launch. We'll make sure that, you know, like snow is snow, rain is rain. And also mm -hmm. I want to have real, you know, I'm, I'm from Florida and, uh, it's hot, right? It's yeah, hot. It's humid, it, it, hot, humid, sticky. Yeah. Even hot and sticky. It, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want I, I I would like a weather effect that's that's really strong heat, right? That really dehydrates the other team. Yes. And when you're in the sun, it starts to deplete your uh, stamina. And when you're out of the sun, you know, like in the shade, like Miami Dolphins do this all the time. Miami Dolphins put their opponents in the sun so they get tired and they stay in the shade. Um, so stuff like, like that, cold it, weather, like your fingers getting cold, you know, outside, you know, you get, like being able to catch a ball in the winter. If you're not moving a lot on the field, like you get cold, if you're not moving just in real life and it's cold, yeah. out, you're going to get cold. You yeah. know what I mean? Things like that. That's yeah, really that's a good idea. Solid. There may or may good not idea. be a video on this channel that the old man Smokey J did talked about weather affecting attributes. Yeah, exactly yeah. what you talked about. Yeah, that's, so, that's funny that you mentioned that. That's crazy. Yeah. We did this. We, that's so cool. Months yeah, exactly. ago. We were talking about the games. Uh, we had, I remember that was for me, at least maybe it's just like, uh, what do they call it? The Mandel effect. But I remember in like, oh, two NFL fever, whenever the trailer first came out, they had a dude running in the snow. And like, that was just crazy because the dude was running yep. down the snow and you could see his footprints getting left behind. What It didn't have any immediate effect on it. 
but the cosmetic and the aesthetic fact of it alone. You know, like for a kid or somebody playing that game, imagine if it's really snowy outside and they just want to replicate that in game and kind of just get more immersed in what they're in. So yep. seeing that even from the cosmetic and the aesthetic standpoint is solid. It doesn't even necessarily have to affect it if the physics are already being prioritized on a player to player basis. So that's really cool to hear so many layered, you know, aspects of a game coming together. And then you could do you could do a little more too, right? Like like with the attributes, like you're saying, you could have you know you could have Florida boys who don't play very well. In yeah, the they don't play in the cold. Right. Yeah, yeah, they're not or using the cold, so they don't even have like the gloves. Yeah, exactly. For it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Coming down don't to got play the cleats, Florida. plastic yeah. cleats, metal cleats. There's so many different things that actually do yeah. affect that I don't I don't think people consider as a factor that go in that. That's really fascinating. That's so cool though. That was really cool. You even had that thought process. Literally was just talking about that months ago. That would yeah, be so that's cool. awesome. That would be so dope. A lot of people think that game developers game developing is so easy but just yeah. so many layers of this and i've learned seeing, so much just seeing that animation time frame was a, that was actually a really big eye opener there was like little small facets but then you think about the 3d modeling that goes into it getting all the pixels to work like it's actually really interesting to see the, the breakdown of that and hear it from from you know from it's almost like you know from inception it's it's really cool to hear how that all goes into a process i got one more gameplay we can actually talk about this is just a dude wide open in the middle of the field just as simple as him making a, a catch wide open in the middle of the field. It's it's wild. He's running the street. Oh, you got it hatches. on screen. Yep, I got it on screen okay. right now. It's just something as simple as him running wide open. It's it's crazy, man. Like the work that goes into just something as simple as him catching a ball. Yeah, watching the like yeah. animation keyframes, it's just like wow. Because it's like you can see it's like all right, the ball's here. Is it this animation? No, mm -hmm. and like that that time that window is so small. You got to consider we're already looking at this on a frame by frame basis. That's not like 30, 60 FPS. Like it's slow already. So to to be finding that in that time window and considering all the different variables like linebackers, corners, yeah. you know, it's just like, man, there, there's a lot more that goes into this than just saying, he threw that that way. Why didn't yeah. he catch it? It's, it's a lot deeper than that. Exactly, Turk. Like, I, yeah. I, I can't believe it. Like, we're not, we're not even configuring the defense in this. Like, that's yeah, the yeah, wild that's, part. Yeah, so, you know, the first thing we do is make things look perfect. Like, try to make things look or work well in a perfect environment, right? Like, this is an environment where everybody has 100 attributes. There's no defenders on the field messing things up. And so it's just a perfect environment. So we we make sure that the passes are perfect in this environment. And then we move it into a real environment with defenders and, and, and players who have worse attributes and see how it works. Um, but another point to what you're saying about how hard development actually is, a good way to think of it is that like, you know, when you go, it's it's sort of like construction of a building. Um, like we're basically building, a we're building a giant building, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we're making here. But we don't just build the building. We actually have to build we have to build the bulldozer first. We have to build the tools that make the building, right? Like this that yeah. you're looking at right here, this is a tool to actually create the game. And yeah. you have to spend a lot of time creating tools. So it's like, you have to build the bulldozer. You had to build the dump truck. You got to build the shovels. You got to build everything. You got to build everything. The hard hat. I was talking about like the player almost, because you know, you're building the game itself is the game, but then you, the, the player itself, you're considering almost like the pilot of this thing that you're giving. You know what I mean? It's at the end of the day, you're like, people are going to be using this and, and playing this. With and so many, humans. yeah. That, that's that's really interesting. Like you said, you're creating the tools, and that kind of really it, like it clicked in my brain when I was watching all the animations, the keyframe. I was like, man, like they're building this game, and then they have to consider what ways can somebody find a way to exploit this that we haven't went over. How can somebody like? There's so many different variables that go into this. It's just really fascinating. See, so, yeah, I, I and. Also, one thing from our uh, Mort, I didn't mean to like that, go into the other one. One of our mods asked the question. He says, "What are what are the long term goals uh, for Maximum Football? What, what would you think is a long term goal for you guys?" Uh, the long term goal is just to to be number one, right? I mean, yeah, that's you know, what I'm talking um, about. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, we sir. the short term goal is just to establish ourselves as a solid uh, simulation football game. Something you know, we want people to think of us in the same light as they think of 2K and Madden. Um, and just, you know, as a top tier football game. Yes. And so that's our first goal. That's our first goal is just to get in the conversation, right? Just so people know us and they talk about us in the same breath that they talk about the other top football games. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, sky's we're, limit. We, you know, yeah, sky's the limit after that. And one good thing about, you know, this kind of ties into your last question about, you know, building the game is that everybody on our team knows how to build this game. We built the game to get, like we built this game. So it's not a situation where all the people who built the game left the studio 10 years ago and now we have to relearn mm. you know all the tools that they made and, and dig into and figure it all out and you know this is something that you know um 
you know, like one, one project. Yeah. So this is some, you know, you know, something that um, my coworker, my boss, Bruce has said before that, you know, I think was really wise is that, you know, there's certain, you know, it, you, you either build civilization or you live, you just live in the civilization that other people built. Right. And so like we built, we're building, we're building this, this civilization here. We, and not only that, like, we're not just living in something that somebody else built. Like we built this. So we know all the details of it. If we want to change something in the game, we know exactly what to change. So our ability to iterate and to make the game better is very fast. Like we're, we're running at this, at like, you know, for the first year and a half, we were kind of just walking and crawling and, and progress is a little slow, but we have a team now that understands everything we're working on. Like, to a T. We understand yeah. everything we're working on. We know what we're doing. When something breaks, we know how to go fix it. Yeah. We we understand the game we're working on because we built it from the ground up. You know? I I think I think we just found the quote from Maximum Football. We we built this. A... Yeah, that, I'm not gonna lie. That kind of stuff. I was like, man, I, I thought I, about standing up and just going on. looking on the porch for a second and yeah, like not... thinking about life. In that <laughs> I quote. Lie. I was like, man, <laughs> am I that... living in a civilization or did I build? <laughs> I'd write that on a poster, sir, and put that as a marketing team. We built this civilization. I love that. Okay, we have yeah, one that, super solid. chat question too. I missed uh, Sim Gaming Network. Shout out to Sim Gaming. He asked, um, "Will kicks will kicks be affected by the wind when weather is?" Empty? So we were talking. Yeah. About oh yeah. Yeah, they will. Right now, they don't because we don't have like wind effects right now. But eventually, they will. Yeah. Great. Well, Isaiah, Kirk, you got anything? I, I think else? I got my brain picking personally, man. I, I'm not gonna. This was like so much more. Like, obviously, I, I was I was really excited to have the interview and just kind of you know, like you said, pick your brain here. But I got so much more information than I expected. I, I I don't got any more to ask myself, and I just appreciate you coming on here and letting us pick your brain and expose, like I said, the more in my my whole, like I said, intermediary and just expose the good side of the community and and provide good feedback. So I just appreciate you being here, and I, that's all for me personally. I I can't even say anything else better than what uh Turk just said. Uh, I I said before, thank you for taking the time out of your day. I learned more here than I thought I was going to. Absolutely, you really broke it down. You literally got everybody hyped in the chat. So I'm just going to leave the floor for you right now, man. Tell the people where they can find you, anything you want to say to the community that's here, all 90 plus people in this chat. So floor's yours. Uh, first off, thanks for having me. Uh, we should do this again. I mean, I'm down to do it whenever you guys yes. want to. You guys are, Absolutely. You guys are cool. So uh, I, I like chatting with us. This is fun. Um, you know, we are, we're launching this year. I can't give you the exact date yet you know as soon as i as soon as i know the date i will tell i mean i already know the date but as soon as i can tell you guys the date um and believe me i want to tell you i want to tell you more than you guys want to know it because yeah. i am so i'm so just like oh my god i can't say anything i can't say anything online without people like what where's the date where's the date you yeah. know so I, i'm desperate to, to tell you guys the date um but you know i'm glad to be here um i'm really excited about this game um you know just you know one thing, just you know, support us. I don't mean support us like we're bums and we need your, you know, we need your money. Um, I mean, <laughs> I mean, just support us. You know, defend us if you see people online saying bad stuff or whatever. Yeah. Um, because you know, it's it it sounds dumb, but you know, that word matters. of mouth mean it, ma it does matter. It yeah, matters it so lot. much. Yeah. At the it just it just matters. Yeah. And you you have unnecessary complaints without any articulate, like I said, good positive solutions for stuff that you're complaining about. Because if you're a genuine supporter of anything, you're not just going to complain blindly. You wouldn't do that to anything or anybody that you care about. Just complain blindly without any offering of a solution. So that last part is so big. And, sure. and I echo that as as loudly as I possibly can. So yeah. I, I can't say, I can't iterate that enough. I get so tired of seeing the misinformation and negativity yeah. behind things for no reason. I'm not going to put names out here. I'm not yeah. doing that. I'm not giving limelight to people that don't deserve it, man. But we all know how hard you work in the community and the yes, team sir. you got. It shows. It shows y'all care. So yes. thank you. Yeah, glad to do it, man. It's exciting. Hey, man. Well, I can't wait to have you back on. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll get you back on. You know, after you make that big announcement that everybody's been waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Um, I'm gonna hit you guys with the usual YouTube plug. Please, please, please. If you enjoyed this, please hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. It does help us out so, so much. And uh, follow us, man, on Twitter. Yeah. Follow, follow everything follow. Maximum Entertainment. Everything Maximum that you can look for it look and it. dig for it. Click it. Hit the button. Yes. Until next time, guys, it has been SGN.